So here's the headline. North Korea attacks on U.S. military bases in Pacific over bombers deployment. North Korea threatens attacks on U.S. military bases in Pacific over bombers deployment. Quote, if the U.S. is reckless, misjudging the trend of the times and the strategic position of the DPRK, all the U.S. military bases in the operational theater in the Pacific, including Guam, will face ruin in the face of all-out and substantial attack to be mounted by the army of the DPRK. That was the threat, the weirdly worded, always over-the-top threat from North Korea. That was the threatening headline about North Korea saying they're going to hit Guam. But that headline was not from today. It was not from this week. It was from this time last year. This time last year, North Korea was threatening to shoot missiles at Guam. It's a very bad thing that North Korea is threatening to shoot missiles at Guam. But if you have been hearing this week that the reason our president is issuing these threats now to start a nuclear war with North Korea, the, the reason the threats are so scary and the brinksmanship is so insane this week, right? If you've been hearing that that reason is because of the North Koreans crossing a new red line and threatening to shoot missiles at Guam, it's undoubtedly a bad thing that they're making those threats, but it's not new. They threaten to shoot missiles at Guam all the time. Today's warnings from North Korea are the latest in a series of provocative threats, which have forced the U.S. and South Korea to plan for possible military retaliation. The North Koreans claim they put their long-range missiles on high alert, aimed at American targets in Guam, Hawaii, and the U.S. mainland. That was not from this week. That was not from this year. That was not from last year. That was March 2013. Another time when North Korea was threatening Guam, and in that case, they were threatening not just Guam, but Hawaii and South Korea and the U.S. mainland as well. It's really bad that North Korea is threatening Guam. Guam is U.S. soil. It's really bad that they're mounting those threats. But they do it a lot. What's different this week in terms of it feeling like we're on the brink of war like never before, what's different is not that North Korea is doing something they've never done before. It's not how threatening their behavior is. I mean, their threats obviously have to be taken seriously. They always have been in the past, but we haven't had weeks like this in the past. What is actually unprecedented, what is truly new, is the behavior of the American government, not the North Korean government. President Trump threatened war against North Korea again today for the fourth straight day. Uh, then he announced that he would be speaking with the Chinese president tonight. And then, I kid you not, he said, quote, Hopefully, it will all work out with North Korea. And then he proceeded to threaten North Korea again. What's happened this week, this strange netherworld of threats and over-the-top alliterative comments from the president about nuclear war, what has happened this week is not because of something definitively new in terms of the North Korean threat. All of what we've been experiencing this week appears to have been sparked within our own government by a newspaper article by a Washington Post article that described one confidential defense intelligence agency report, a report that has not been publicly released. It's a report that supposedly concluded that North Korea has miniaturized a nuclear weapon and can fit one onto a missile. Now, the defense intelligence agency might be right about that, but they have been exactly wrong about this exact thing before. And no other intelligence agencies Still now, all these days into this crazy period we're in right now, no other U.S. intelligence agencies have come out and publicly made their own case that supports those same conclusions. What does explain the president spending the last four days threatening a war against North Korea? What explains such a change in U.S. policy toward North Korea when North Korea hasn't changed really at all? What explains potentially starting a war over this and threatening it every day? Joining us now is Joe Serencioni, president of a global security foundation called the Plowshares Fund. Mr. Serencioni, I know from an inside source that I am screwing up your vacation, which makes me particularly <laughs> grateful that you are here tonight, and I'm sorry to your family. Well, thank you very much, Rachel. I'm in your state of Massachusetts on Cape Cod, but it's always a pleasure to join you. Well, I hereby wish you a tan and a bluefish tomorrow to make up for all of this. 
Um, <laughs> Done. Joe, I, I feel a little bit alone in the wilderness on this, which is why I'm particularly grateful you're here. Um, yes. Is it true that there is nothing substantively new from North Korea? Obviously, North Korea is a military and nuclear threat. They have been marginally advancing both in their missile technology and their nuclear technology over the years. They had another missile test a couple of weeks ago. But is it true that there's really nothing new that led to this week of this incredible brinksmanship we're seeing? Not this week. You're right. They have achieved the capability to launch a ballistic missile at the United States. They may have the ability to put a, a nuclear warhead on there. They don't know if it's reliable yet. But this, the last successful test, happened two weeks ago. You didn't see this kind of reaction ac after they actually crossed that threshold. What we have is a DIA intelligence assessment leaked to the Washington Post. I don't hear the Trump administration complaining about this leak. It may be correct. I, I personally think that it's more or less correct. But we don't know. The DIA should show their work. What we need is to have an unclassified version of this and the other intelligence assessments that are slowly leaking out. Let's see why they're, they're holding these judgments. Let's, let's have hearings in Congress, closed for classified information, open so the rest of us can do this. Remember, when we were in the buildup to the war with Iraq, there were also these intelligence statements. It's when they made an unclassified version public that some of us doubted the intelligence, criticized this, showed the exaggerations. It didn't work to stop the war. Maybe we could learn our lesson. It's certainly time for us to take a closer look at this particular assessment. And Joe, the, the, the sort of common wisdom about the structure of how these decisions are being made within this administration in this White House is that while the president might be unpredictable and might be sort of freelancing on these issues and saying things that come to mind for whatever reasons, there are adults on national security matters. H.R. McMaster uh, as the national security advisor, General uh, or Secretary Mattis um, at the Department of Defense. They are adults. They are experienced national security professionals, and they're the sort of people who would make sure that the right processes were followed if the United States were going to come to a war footing with an adversary like North Korea, or, or that we were going to make a major change and our stance toward that country. Is there any indication that those adults in the administration are, are doing anything like that? Are you seeing any signs that um, there's going to be an effort to, to make a case to the public for, for what, is, what is driving this, this radical change and this brinksmanship from the president? I was very disturbed by the press conference today to see the president trot out his secretary of state, his national security advisor, his UN ambassador basically as props to sort of validate his statement. And he made even more wild statements today that there was a military option with Venezuela. What is he talking about? I don't see any evidence that the real experts, the people who actually know what they're doing, what they're talking about, have control over this situation. They are being dragged behind by the president who seems to make it up on the fly. When he says, you know, I'm not going to talk about that, we don't talk about that, what he means really is, I don't know what I'm talking about. Hmm. I just thought this up a minute ago, these words are coming out of my mouth, and now I'll leave it to my staff to justify, uh, explain what I'm saying. Th this is troubling enough when it comes to things like Venezuela, when it comes to what could be the largest war we've seen on this planet since World War II and possibly a nuclear exchange. This is downright dangerous. This is not normal. This is bizarre. We are witnessing the destruction of American grand strategy before our eyes. We're witnessing the collapse of American credibility. I, no, I don't think the adults have control over this situation. Joe Svencioni, president of the Plowshares Fund, thank you, giving us all a reason to need another vacation, even if some of us just came back to one. Uh, I appreciate you being here tonight, Joe. Back to your vacation with you right now. Thank you, Rachel. All right, we got much more to come here tonight. Stay with us. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.